Bleary-eyed, you wake up, ready for full extraction, but it's all gone. This is the story of one business who lost their competitive advantage and how they can get it back. It's a Monday, and opening up shop on a Monday is something you can daydream through. But on this occasion, your dream is shattered and the nightmare ensues. That buzzing of commuters getting their morning coffee is nowhere in sight. Have all those years of hard work crumbled into a heap? Or is it a zombie apocalypse? With panic in your chest, you rush to the front of the shop to look outside and see what's going on. With anticipation, fear ensues of the imminent attack of those neck biters. Scanning the street, there's not a zombie in sight. Your heart sinks. Rather, you notice a furor of hedonism culminating across the road at what looks like a brand new coffee shop. Your heart sinks deeper. The roars are excruciating because you recognize the people you're seeing. Only yesterday, it was these people who were in your shop, your loyal and raving fans. But somehow their loyalty is strayed. It feels like there's no turning back. Yes, it is real. Has your coffee dream reached full extraction? Or is there a way out? You mope for a moment, but it's not really your thing. You're usually so vibrant and full of joy. But this is a new low. It's a disaster. You try to shrug it off, but you can't help but sulk. In an attempt to raise the vibration, you prepare your first coffee. To bring back some life. It feels like it's your death row meal, but yet you persist. You persist to carefully and lovingly prepare the perfect espresso. With a heart full of sorrow, you take your first sip and it reminds you of why you got started. You close your eyes and feel the nuance of the coffee with the chocolate and the berries erupting inside your mouth. You let out a smile and it takes you back to the very first day with your very first customer. You remember why you started and what you live for. And you start to wonder, what happened? Was it the complacency and routine of the way I run my business that overshadowed my passion? And now, my customers are their customers. What am I to do? This new normal wasn't going to change the fact that I never give up. It's awoken the sleeping sensation, the rush of getting those customers in here, the reason why they're here or were here every single day. Maybe all isn't lost. Maybe I just got a little bit lost. Right now, my rivals have the competitive advantage, but I'm going to get my unfair advantage and take back what is mine. In this scenario, it's obvious that the business owner didn't see it coming, which they should have, but has the right mindset to not give up and to go back and elicit the unfair advantage. The competitive advantage and the unfair advantage are synonymous. They are the ability for a business to outcompete with product, service, speed, efficiency, and potentially price in the market that they reside. What most cafes are actually doing is called the comparative advantage. It's a marginal sort of advantage that different businesses have over one another that are serving the same kind of product. In coffee, there has been some innovation, techniques of extraction, espresso technology, cold brew, these kinds of things. However, is there a demand for that? Countrywide, the most preferred coffees are the flat white, the latte, and the cappuccino. New tech probably isn't gonna solve it in this case. It's likely that business B outperformed the environment and the nuance of business A. The customers in business A had grown accustomed to the routine and the predictability of the experience in business A. Business B comes along professing bright, new, shiny experiences and of course there's an attraction that comes with that. An example of where the comparative advantage has backfired was when I worked at a cafe and it was their birthday celebration week so the owner decided to discount their coffee. All that actually resulted for that week was a loss in revenue. It's the same amount of customers buying the same products, but at a discounted price. Discounting price just isn't enough. You've got to promote these specials and they've got to come with some nuanced value that the customer 
absolutely cannot live without. It's the life force that comes with the product and the value association with price that draws people in. It can't just be a flimsy, wishy-washy kind of promise that sways people to change their spending habits. So in business, hey, they've got the never say die attitude, so to speak, and they're ready to go back into the market competing, guns blazing, and draw back some of their market share. The first thing that they need to do is they need to scout their competitors. What are these people doing that are so much better than what I'm doing is the question they should ask. Market research is what we call this. So they've got to go online. They've got to research their competitors in their markets. Look for complementary products too, like coffee pods or beans or ground coffee and see what is it that these guys are delivering that I'm not delivering. Why would an absolute 100% attrition rate occur overnight? There has to be some form of deficiency to make someone change like that. So that's online market research, but two, they've got to go to their competitor's place of work, experience it for themselves, see what is the process to getting a coffee? How does it taste? How does it feel? What's the environment like? This can take some time. A great example of where this is done well is in the high-end fine dining scene where staff are briefed on just about every little detail possible. Customer profiles are created with every nuance of their desires and their allergies all the way through. And the customer service experience is seamless. In cafes, it's a bit like the Wild West. There's very little planning and never an actual game plan. But the thing that happens in cafes so much that really gets on the nerves of customers is the bottleneck at the point of ordering or sale. Don't get me wrong, Business B does have their work cut out for them because if they've taken total market share, they're going to have some bottlenecks too. And unless they plan for that, some of the original customer base from Business A will naturally drift back. There'll be the kinds of people who aren't interested in the loud, crazy furor environment. They want a little more intimate, relaxed, calm environment and they don't want to wait. When this happens, Business A has to put their planning to the test. So if that's you, please do some planning, do some market research and then put it to the test. It's the common sense kind of processes like what to do on arrival, seating procedures and sales SOPs. Yes, that's standard operating procedures. Moreover, ensure that you've got the staff that'll commit to this because it can be difficult, it can be energy draining and you want the right staff in place. Otherwise, you'll just annoy your customer once again and they'll drift back to business B. When it comes to products, it's extremely competitive. The margins aren't necessarily bulging. An advice I'd give you if you're in the hospitality industry is to look for products that carry a larger than 10% margin. That'll give you a little buffer which means you're gonna to have to spend time sourcing cheaper ingredients that carry high value through their quality. And when you receive these products, test them, have people try them, get their feedback, make sure you know for a fact that this is going to sell before you buy a whole boatload of this stuff. Now, I hope you understand now why this is so bloody hard and why so many cafes die an early death. I may have just outlined the impossible problem, but heck, we love coffee, we love breakfast, we love brunch. It's going to happen. We need to be prepared so that we don't become the statistic. Like any industry, it's a game of chess. In the beginning, costs are up, revenues down. We need to be planned for that. We need to be ready to make those chess pieces fall in the direction of the path to success. And that's wishy-washy, I understand, but each business's nuance is different. Some are product oriented, some are cost oriented, but hey, there's value in all of those different facets of business. Get to know them really well, put them together with your market research and deliver a great quality product at a great quality margin. By and large, I've never seen all these aspects of business put together in the cafe scene, and that's why there's no major players in it. They don't have the competitive advantage, they've merely got the comparative advantage. Often people just buy nuanced, trendy products, which is a great idea on the surface, but really it's just the comparative idea. It's just the comparative advantage. It's trying to lure people into this bright, shiny object, which actually is more expensive in the early days than doing the true and tried things, such as identifying what are the most profitable and popular products. Latte, cappuccino, flat white, that's your bread and butter. 
Taking all of this into consideration, I understand you're left with some questions. So what do you do next? How do you get all this information and then put it to the test? Well, Dr. Google, my friends, is fantastic. Sure, there's a lot of stuff to filter through, but hey, it's free information. Go ahead, extract the goods, put it to the test, see what works, what doesn't work. That's another downfall from Business A. They did think that what was going to happen in their success was going to continue to happen. And of course, they were overshadowed by someone who had done some of these things today. There's a lot of new competition coming into the market. Only a couple years ago, five cafes a day were opening. Clearly, we love cafes here. That's not gonna change anytime soon. So if you've got a cafe, just think, there are more shops opening up around me constantly. How do I maintain my competitiveness? What's the strategic planning that I can put in place? How can I test and measure it? And how can I keep my customers happy as well as my bank balance? Here's a quick checklist of things that you can use to indicate whether you have the competitive advantage or not. Your total costs are at a minimum 10% less than your total revenue. Your customers are leaving glowing reviews. Very rarely are there any complaints. The number of regular customers is growing weekly. How do you know? Because you're keeping a list. Why? So that you can reward them. The average wait time is less than 10 minutes. Your staff are happy and they tell you so. Pretty common sense, right? I know, I know we've got stresses, it's time constraints, money constraints, it's a head game. But yet, if you follow those different areas, you can actually see whether or not you are being competitive. Price, quality of your product, customer feedback, operational staff feedback. Even better than that, there are some really important impacts to winning at this game. You've got a cafe. You're not just building a business for the sake of having an income. You're also building a potential retirement fund. This is an asset which becomes more and more imminent the older we get. Take care of your future by building this right. You get to work for yourself. You're calling the shots. You get to serve the products you want. You get to make so many people happy every single day with the products and services you put into the market. You're avoiding having to work for somebody else. Now with all this doom and gloom, it seems rather apparent you shouldn't even start. But I disagree for the above reasons. Those are absolute gold. Go ahead, take it by the horns and see how far you can go if you're so inclined to do so. Yes, the coffee apocalypse is coming for all of us, but I'll ask you this question. Are you gonna be the reason that it wins?